Why now? Why now is probably, a, I mean, it's a little bit of a, a, a long answer. Um, when this shooting first happened, or let's say even before the shooting, you have a school board that's very intimate with the superintendent, you're intimate with each other, you're intimate with even cabinet members because you're regularly having them report to you and, and then all of a sudden a shooting takes place and you find yourself, and not just me, the superintendent, cabinet, in a room with a lot of other voices. You've got um, uh, a law enforcement voices that are in and out, in and out, in and out. You've got attorneys in and out, in and out, in and out. You've got consultants in and out because there's so many things happening. And for, I would say, weeks, it was a numbness to just simply want to deal with the gravity of what took place. And then it was, we got to get these kids back in school, but we got to get a school back ready for kids. And oh my gosh, we had to get teachers ready for... And so all of a sudden, everybody is working 24 seven, making sure that we're getting uh, Oakland County Mental Health in and that we're working with the teachers and healing them up. But I mean, and are they healed up? No, heal them up enough that they go back in the classroom, heal them up enough, repair a building enough to get people back in and start figuring out how we can offer education halfway through a year where now some kids might want to go virtual, some kids might want to go back in the classroom and, and offer every possible option. And so I think all of our attention was in those realms because we basically assumed law enforcement was had everything else in hand and that we should probably be hands off for right now. They're taking our servers, they're taking our information, we're giving them all the emails, any information they want. They're going into the Crumley home and taking things out of there and, and we just said, okay, they, the prosecution, they've got their thing to do, we've got our thing to do. And then, from the very beginning, Jim, the voices in the room, and, 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 and I'm not going to say it's a singular voice, said that we should avoid conversations about that day or anything surrounding that day because we're not supposed to upset the prosecution. But that changed months ago when the prosecutor came out and said, you're free to discuss this. It will not affect the criminal cases. Correct. She lifted that off of you. So let me say that as a board member, I never got that communication from her. I did not know that. The board was beginning to hear parents say, hey, our, our prosecutor is okay with us doing a third party. Well, if there's a question, you can reach out to her. She'll take your call. You're the board president out here. She'll take your call. And, and, eventually, and eventually conversations did take place. And so what I wanna say is, as we began to hear our community saying, she doesn't have a problem with a third party review, I would see a meeting or two I was still feeling like, no, we're not supposed to upset. I mean, listen, if someone says, if you reveal information about the 30th and it could upset what she's doing, upset her prosecution, we kind of stayed on that line too long until finally the same meeting where the kids were talking about the memorial, the temporary memorial and all those kind of things, I heard it again. The prosecutor said, so I asked, and finally heard that back in like March, mm -hmm. it was stated. I did not know. I will tell you the board did not know in March that she made a statement or sent out a memo. And so when we finally got our legs underneath us, we moved quickly. Yeah. We moved quickly. Let me ask you this. Uh, in the position that you were in, you were doing a balancing act of a lot of different forces. Clearly. You, you just kind of articulated some of those. But the perception was, you guys, the board and the administration, built up a wall. Yep. And you were protecting the institution. Yes. And you were not coming clean. I understand. There was no accountability. Yeah. I understand the perception. And Buck Mir 
was livid with you. Yeah. Did you, if you had it to do over again, would you have been more open? I think that... Sooner? I think that every school district that's gone through this says, I wish I would have. So yes, I wish, I, first of all, if I would have known that, that those words weren't just coming from upset parents, but they were actually coming from the prosecutor, we would have moved faster to... I absolutely understand that we f that that we would appear from the outside like we were in this kind of protective bubble. You were, and I can tell you that there were there were voices within the board saying we've got to say things, we've got to speak. This community trusts us, and when we're silent, the only noise in the bubble is is a uh, is, is the noise you get. And so, yes, looking back, I would have wanted to speak. A month or two ago earlier the same things we're saying today it's not new information it's things that i knew things that i thought i could communicate and and get the community to to listen and i and hope you're, listen you, now you were losing i know the community i know you were losing trust yep we were losing trust and i want to regain that back and that's why that's why you're doing all this now and that's and it's not because i mean and, and they, they i understand i understand that they say um, you're just trying to cover your behinds. You're, you're just, I, I got to put up with that because they have a right to say that. But it wasn't because we were covering our butts. It was because we finally got our feet under us and the board finally began to realize what was going on. We had a, we, it's like we almost rose up and said, hey, we got to look at some things. And once we did that, you'll see a history over the last four or five board meetings that we've been more proactive, more, more vocal, more statements being made. Um, yes, Jim, I wish you would have done it sooner, but we're doing it now and are not doing it because we're, we didn't do the silence because we were trying to hide something, but I sure know that that was the perception and I want to regain the community's trust. The perception was you were protecting the institution because there's a lot of thought, including from the sheriff, just a couple of days after the shooting, that if certain things had been done, the shooting didn't have to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know that that's the perception. Do you know what happened? Do you know who did what moment by moment by moment as the school board president? Close. Yes. We've walked through the building as a board. We've had um, timeline discussions. And who did what? Who made what decisions? We've heard some of the names come out. E. Jack, Hopkins. Mm -hmm. We've heard those names. Mm -hmm. Hopkins was on the witness stand. You're, we, he's on, he's, you already have an hour and a half, two hour uh, thing on the YouTube uh, for him. Right, right. But is there anything you don't know about what happened on November the 30th? I don't know things that the prosecutor knows. I don't know things that, uh, information that she may have because of going into the crumbly house. Think, okay, well, yeah, yeah. But, but, but I mean, as far as in the school. From in a the, school perspective, yeah. the board is up updated on, I believe we know everything that the school district can tell, or the, school, the administration can tell us. That not, not, not that they can. We have requested they tell us everything, and over weeks and months, they have told us what they've given over to the, to the um, prosecutor. They have told us the events. Like, we've gone through the chronology by minutes. So you know what happened under the roof of Oxford High School on November the 30th? Yes. The community wants to know that. Yes, and that's why we're doing the third party review. They but, don't want to hear it but from you, me. Put it on the table now. You see what's playing out in Uvalde, Texas. I do. We're, we're starting to see all of that unfold, and that's not even two months ago. That's, what, six weeks ago. Yours is almost seven months ago, and we still don't have those answers from the outside looking in. You have the answers. Why not put them out there? Let, let the facts speak and let the chips fall. I may be, I, I, I would be interested, I'd like to talk to the other board members. I mean, one of the things with this particular interview is that um, I had to tell them that I'm doing this without getting their permission and, and uh, I don't want to go too far without their consent as a board. Um, but yes, I'm not afraid. Isn't it time for that now, seven months later? I would like to talk to the prosecutor if, if there's any lines. So I would want to call her and talk to my board and say, are there any lines that you don't want me to cross 
when it comes to talking about what took place on the 29th and 30th. And if she were to give me a green light and, and we talked about all that, then I would maybe be willing to do it. But right now, I, would wanna, I don't want to be premature and jump into those areas and then find out that I cross some lines she would not have wanted me to cross. Right. Um, I think I'm almost done. One question I want to ask you, though, is you're now doing this indep independent investigation, and you had the other one that was done earlier, Secure Educational Consultants and now Guidepost. Yes. How much overlap? How do they differentiate? The um, SEC... They came, they came in with the, within hours of the shooting and by request locked down processes, procedures, and training and like what kinds of, what were our safety protocols, what were all of those things prior to the shooting. And so that's, that is what they were focused on and that's the report that came out in December as they were talking about that. And so guidepost will probably talk to that company to help build a framework because their job is to take a whole report right so they'll use some of what sec did and verify what sec did then we kept working with sec because of their expertise as to what refinements could we make what kind of things could we do better some are very simple, numbering doors on the inside and the outside. Others quite complex, like the Evolve system or Eagle Eye. Um, so he continues to, to work, that company continues to work with us now on making us the safest school in the country. A lot has been made that Attorney General Dana Nessel offered three times to come in and do an independent third party investigation I've been told that you said no three times mm -hmm. because she's a political animal and she's pretty outwardly left-leaning Democrat. You're up here in northern Oakland County, very Republican, and that you did not want her to take anything she might find and make it political. Your response? First is, it's, it's not my decision, it's a board, so it's not me. Secondly, um, I'm unaware of her political position or what side of the aisle that she might be on. As we were looking at the third party review, we started a committee several months ago. We were already talking to Guidepost. Even before she offered the first time, we were looking for companies who've done this before. Companies who, who's, that's what they do, is jump into a, an explosion and say, okay, what happened? And what were the causes? And what could prevent it? And what can we learn? What are you paying Guideposts? What's we, your budget for that? We know it's probably between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars. That she runs the state of Michigan law enforcement system. She has vast resources mm -hmm. at her disposal, and it was going to be free and thorough. And you still said no. Well, we appreciate everything that she's doing in our community. She's been here two or three times talking to our community, and we appreciate that. Um, one of the things I said in my last letter is, I, I wish you would talk to us so that we can work, do some things in concert. Because, for instance, an obvious one was this last time she offered up a, um, an ammunitions dog. If we would just would have talked, she would know that we already have one. I'd love for her to use that 501c3 to help pay for art. I would like us to work together so that we can communicate what we're doing and not doing. But, but back to the, the, um, the, the third cost. party review. Yeah, the cost. Guidepost and companies like it, you choose them because they're 100% independent. They have no skin in the game. But wait a minute. They don't have a political... When this was announced, they're going to send their findings to a law firm, not directly to the public. They're going to be sanitized and filtered by oh, a law no. firm. Oh, no. That's the way it came out? No. no. It did not come out that way. It did not come out that way. I can go back and pull out the news release. Yes, there's a law firm. But Another law firm, not the Mullins firm in correct. Troy. Varnum is yeah, a law firm. Yeah, in, in Grand Rapids. So let me. So why go through them? I talked about voices before. The board wanted to have another voice, a legal voice. So we hired Varnum. To work with Guidepost. We hired Varnum 
to work with us. But it was also within days of that that we were making decisions in our board about Guidepost, only to find out the two of them have worked together before. Did not know that. I, we hired Varnum because the board wanted another legal voice to talk to. Board, school boards do it all the time, have more than one attorney. And so we hired Varnum because we wanted another voice in the room talking to us about, uh, are we thinking clearly? We're not attorneys. And you got lawsuits happening, you got prosecution happening, and we wanted another voice speaking into us, guiding us. So are you pledging today that the guidepost report will come out as is, no fingerprints on it from anybody, it's going to go from their, their report will go directly to the public. Jim, that's what we stated just the other day, Tuesday, in my, in my letter, that the only thing that I know from Guidepost is periodically they're gonna to say, Tom, we're starting to do some interviews within the school. They have to, to get permission. Tom, you know, they told me a couple weeks ago that they had some great meetings with the prosecutor. That's all I know. They don't give me data or information. When they do their report, we said on Tuesday, simultaneously, the community, and the board will get the report at the same time. Unsanitized. What I understand, and I want to make this clear, is that a law firm, Guidepost has used law firms, and I think, and, and this is my projection, I want to ask this question to them, that the reason why they, they want during their process to have attorney privilege right. is that they don't want to be faced with FOIAs in the middle of a process in which the now they're now they're being FOIA stuff that they're not even done using and so what I think as far as I understand it and this is just word of mouth I didn't hear from them is that they've always when they did the Southern Baptist Church they had an attorney it allowed them to do their work independently and not have people 50, million, 50 other attorneys wanting this, wanting that. that. Right. And then everybody gets at the same time. So it's like giving your, it's like creating the vacuum to do the work and then let it out. It. But that, that attorney firm is not a cleaner. They're not, they're not there to filter the information. I assure you of that. Okay. Uh, almost done. Um, backtracking to the question I asked you earlier. Uh, you know what happened under the roof of the high school. In your mind, was this preventable? Preventable from whose perspective? The people calling the shots, the warning signs, which we've all seen, the, the picture depicting the shooting, uh, the uh, journal that he had in his backpack that his father mentioned. Have you written in the journal, which we've now seen parts of, mm -hmm. where he's writing just awful, awful things. My life is useless. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill pretty girls first. Uh, you know, I've read this many times, and these are ones just off the top of my... Warning sign after warning sign after warning sign. He was in the office. Mr. Hopkins said on the witness stand, I was concerned he was suicidal. Mm -hmm. But he didn't take it the next step. He wasn't concerned that he was homicidal. He didn't look in the backpack. He was given his backpack and returned to class. Was this preventable in your mind? I don't get to speak from my mind because I speak as a board president with other board members. And there are some things that I want to say and I don't know if I have permission to say from the prosecutor. I believe the counselor stated that he thought that Ethan had suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. That counselor didn't see drawing his words about killing pretty girls first. That he did. He did have. Well, he didn't have the journal, but he had the drawing. He had, that was on the math paper. He had two things. The day before. The searching of the ammunition. <clears throat> he had the searching of the ammunition. The day of, the drawing on the back of Which a, was scratched over and changed, cleaned up. It was, but, but, the, but the drawing... The teacher who found it took a picture of it. Correct. And 
We all have that information. Sure. The counselor has said suicidal ideation was the route because there's two paths in the processes of looking at um, these issues. Going down, this child is going to harm others. This child could harm self. And the counselor says it in the interview or in, in, in the testimony. testimony that according to what counselors have as a code of ethic, they, if they feel a child might harm themselves or someone else, they go through a period of, of, of evaluative questions and processes that try to determine what realm we may be going. Also know the factor of the parents coming into that room. And they said we're too busy to take him out today. Uh, but not just that. And, 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 and even the way you say that, you're right. As, as the, that was their attitude. But that was a warning shot for that counselor, which took him to par another part of his code, is then you threaten that you have to get ch this child help within a, one or two days, or else you're gonna, we're going to call Child Protective Services. There are, there are protocols in which, because he thought of suicidal ideation, he went down a path that, because of the drawing, because life is meaningless, it was about self. Everything about the drawing was about self, self-hurt. No, it wasn't. The drawing was shooting students blood everywhere. No, no. A body laying down on the ground in a puddle of blood and a gun over the side with words saying life is meaningless, not harming you. There wasn't another body there he's shooting. It is one body sitting there laying in the blood. And he says that it is part of a video game project that he's working on. That's how he cleaned it up. And his own parents corroborated it. Well, but, but I watched the testimony when he was on the stand. And... The father, James Crumley, said to his son during that 10-minute mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. did you write about this in your journal? And there was no follow-up. What journal? Let's see this journal. Where is this journal? The journal was even more stark warning signs. And the journal was Because I've read it. And the journal was in the house, and we haven't It was read in it. the bag. It was in the backpack. Because it's on the floor in the bathroom after the shooting. That's where sheriff's investigators found it. I have those pictures. I can show them to you on my phone. Mm -hmm. It's sitting on the bathroom floor mm -hmm. after the shooting. So there could have been further investigation by that counselor as to what was going on, that it might have been more than just suicidal. It was homicidal. Jim, certainly, but, but, but we always have to remember that 2020 vision is always perfect when the rear view mirror. I mean, I can see after something's over, I can see the could'ves, would'ves, and should'ves. In the moment, we gotta make those calls. And that backpack, for a period of time, was over 100 yards away from that kid. Yeah, but it was brought into the office by EJAC. But, but, but time, time, he's not sweating, he's not doing anything, the counselor's watching, he is not stumbling, he is not fidgeting, he's not wanting his backpack. When we talk about getting the backpack. He doesn't care that a counselor goes and gets it. He doesn't care that someone else picks up that backpack and brings it 150, 100 yards back to the office. He's not worried about it. We don't know that the gun was in the backpack. Presumably. Presumably, but there are others who think it could have been hidden somewhere else. Wait a minute. You've looked at all the surveillance videos. You've tracked his every move mm -hmm. through their surveillance videos. Does the surveillance video show he retrieved the gun from any other location? Not on camera, no. So it was likely in the backpack? Or likely in a restroom where he came out of, hidden somewhere. Okay. Right? He came out, he was in a restroom for and a number out, of minutes. Now, have you seen the video? No, I won't. I, I, I'm I, told it's awful. I went through the walkthrough with the officers and, and things, and I, that's, that's as much I, as I need. I'm told. That's why. It's so hard to see it. And this is why I would just beg, um, I don't know, judges in our, in our state, before you release that video to any attorney, what will it help their case for? What will it help it do? We know the kids, we, we lost children, we know that people got injured. 
do not release that video. But it was offered to you to have an opportunity to see it. Yes, before before um, it was given to the prosecutor, and I, and I chose not to. Um, last question I have is, uh, I've been told by the attorneys in the civil lawsuits that they've done their homework and obviously they're suing for money damages. Um, that the district is insured for five million? Yes. Nothing more than that? Nothing more than that. So the most that they could get in all of these lawsuits for the four students killed, six students injured, one teacher injured, and any of the other students who are going through severe trauma, including the young boy who was in the bathroom and narrowly escaped being shot, five million is all they can get. Is that what your attorneys are telling you? That's, we're just simply saying that's all that's in that insurance policy. And that policy is available to anyone to see. They cannot go after any other they, school assets. They can do any. They can go after anything. They can go. They can go after um, whatever number they want. And how how then a district works with that, right? Do you, do you, do you? I don't know where that'll take us. Um, and that's that is probably going to take year two three before we even know where that's going. But all I can tell you is the policy is a five million dollar policy. Jim, it's a question I ask myself every day. I love this community. Um, I raise children in this community. Um, I'm a pastor in this community. I'm in. I'm in. I want to see us back on our feet to the best of our ability, and then I'll hand over the reins to someone else and, and uh, rest a bit. When's your term end? I got another year and a half for my term, and um, if it needs to take all of that, it'll take all of that, but I, um, I don't... It, I don't want to leave now, not now. I, I believe that this is a time in which we shouldn't have a lot of change. Anything I didn't ask you you'd like to add? No, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to finally say something. This and is your first sit down full interview. Yes. Since the shooting. Yes. And I want to, I want to thank you. Um, for, we thank you. For, well, and, and, and I guess I want to say to the community, can I say this? Um, I know you're angry. I know you're upset. Um, in some ways, I think every right to. You need answers. I want you to know that we want answers. We're part of this community. We want some answers. We want some legal answers. We, 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 want, we want this third party review to be over to tell us what we did, what we didn't do, and what we should have done, and what, what could be done better. We want all of that. But I would beg our community, one, to forgive the board and understand we're not trying to hide anything we just it took us a while to get on our feet and and to get back into control of what we needed to know and we've shaken our head we've gotten on our feet and we're ready and we're now back in the game and uh if people want to call me talk to me i'm open